I know a lot of you think that automotive journalism is a sham. That's because we get press cars usually for a week and only put about 300, 400 miles on them. And then most journalists only write 300, 400 words. Now, if you keep to that ratio, um, that would mean I'd have to write about 1,100 words on the new 2012 Audi A7 because that's how many miles I've driven in the past two days. Well, that's not true because I've got a video crew and my life is actually easier. But let's see how the new A7 is today on FLD Tours. Now the A7 is a whole new model from Audi and it is the response to the four-door coupe movement. Now when you get into a car, and I have to tell you, there, this is the most important thing I feel when it comes to driving a car, and that's the seating and driver position uh, and the environment that you have around you because in fact that's where you're going to be spending most of your time. So when I got into this car I was pleasantly surprised and it wasn't just the beautiful unfinished wood that's here, uh, how the seams are matched up perfectly, it feels Audi, it feels quality. But beyond all that, it came down to the steering wheel. Why? Well because when I sit myself perfectly, this thing comes so far back, it's great. Unlike any other car I've ever been in. Why? Well, this is what I need to drive. I need to be in a proper position where I have full control of the car and at the same time I'm comfortable. My legs are not stacked up here. And more importantly, when I'm sitting in my perfect driving position, I can actually sit behind myself. I'm 6'2", that says a lot, especially for a four-door car. There is one fault though, and that comes down to the instrument cluster. It is the same instrument cluster as you're going to start finding in all the new Audi products, but this instrument cluster has a fault that has to do with the windshield. And the windshield is tilted so far back to keep this roof line, um, the, the windshield is actually further back than the steering wheel, which means it actually gets a reflection off the instrument cluster. So late at night, uh, you're gonna get a heads up display you weren't expecting, and it c does kind of get annoying. That said though, other people who have driven this car not had that problem. I think it has to do with people of my size. Another thing that I love about car interiors, especially at this price point, is that they've become kind of uh, your little home away from home. So in the glove box, Audi now has an option to make that refrigerated. Um, so I can keep my beef jerky nice and cool for the long drives. Thank you. Can you put that in there? We drove the A8 last year and it did have the same MMI software and system, but this one is a little bit different. That's because now we can play with Google Earth. Um, so navigation, you go to the navigation screen and uh, again you can type in with your finger in script where you want to go. And then on the display is what you'd find in Google Earth. Everything is connected to Google via T-Mobile on a 3G network. Now here's the fault, T-Mobile sucks my navigation kept crapping out because T-Mobile kept telling me I lost the connection with Google Earth. I still have my navigation, but I hated getting the message every few seconds telling me your connection is lost, your connection is lost, your connection is lost. Fine, just give me the directions. I don't need Google Earth right now, but stop giving me a message I need to cancel every time you crap out. I hate it when it does that. Now when driving the A7, you'll be pleasantly surprised. It's got a, as I said, a great driving position. But it's also a car that's meant to be on the highway. I think that's the breeding ground for this car. It just eats up the miles. Now under the hood is a three liter supercharged V6. The same motor as in the S4, but it is detuned to about 310 horsepower. 310, you may think, ah, oh, crap, that's not a lot. Well, with this eight speed automatic transmission, it's plenty. It's meant to be in the range of 75 to 80 miles an hour at all times. That's where its comfort zone is. And at those speeds, they'll be getting about 24 miles per gallon, which is quite good. A lot of that, again, is because of the transmission. The eight speed, it shifts very smoothly. It puts you in the optimal gear. And if you really need the power, it will downshift three, four gears at a time. So is the A7 worth the $66,000 price tag? In short, yes. Why? Well, it's got everything you would want out of a uh, large premium sedan like this. For a four-door coupe, it looks awesome. One of the best ones on the market today. It's got Maserati presence, especially when driving around town, and it just eats the miles up. Looks good, drives well, love it. 